We've got Dusler and Orsini back to receive for the Spartans. Dusler at his 15 and Orsini at about the 20. Kicking it off for Bethany will be John McArdle. Orsini and Dusler back for the Spartans. This is Antonio Orsini with the football at the 15. And he gets about 16 yards up to the 31. Brought down at the 31 yard line. So coming out first for Case Western Reserve is their senior quarterback, Drew Saxton. Where's number three? Over 10,000 yards in his career passing, 10,287 to be exact. That is the active leader in all of Division Three in the entire country. And if you and if you add the other divisions, Andrew, Division One and Division Two. He's in the top 10 of active passers. Yeah, and I'll take it one step further. 82 yards today, and he will move into the top 35 in Division Three history. So pretty remarkable career, and if you ask him, it's more about getting a win today versus racking up those stats. So Spartans trying to go to 4-1 and one in PAC play, trying to keep pace with Grove City, who also has just one loss. And also Carnegie Mellon, and there's just a real mix-up in formation here. And Coach Demelak has had to call a timeout. Case out. Western, first time out of the first half. Personnel running on and off, um, and it looks Have like heard they the had absolutely no idea what they wanted to do. <laughs> well, as we've seen throughout the year, when you start going with this two, three quarterback system, you got guys going in, coming out, don't really have a great feel for what they were trying to do there, but didn't exactly look traditional. Everything is set now. Lone back in the backfield will be Orsini, Antonio Orsini, the senior. 407 yards rushing this year. He scored five touchdowns. He's behind his quarterback. Noah Coyne, a favorite target, split out wide to the left. In the slot, the wing back in motion, got the handoff, and that's Caden Parlett. Is a new name for us. New name, new play. Not sure how much we've actually seen of the, the jet sweep action, but positive yards there to start. Looks like, you know, Coach Debs touched on it earlier. This is a point in the season where they're focusing on, all right, from now until four weeks from now, what do we need to improve on? So I would imagine we're going to see a couple new plays, a couple new wrinkles, just to rep it out in a game. You could do it in practice, but nothing really takes the place of doing it on Saturday. Yeah, and the other thing is it gives the opponents in the next three weeks something else to look at. And you and I have actually talked a lot about that, Andrew. That, that sometimes is one of the reasons that you just throw a play in there. Pass over the middle, and it's a little short just at midfield. It looked like he was going after Riley Nurick there. And last, well, two weeks ago, you know, having the buy in between, I think Riley actually had a career high, career high as far as receptions as well as receiving yards. Nice to see him to, you know, continue to emerge and, and become a growing piece of this offense. He had seven catches for 124 yards in that victory two weeks ago. He's got 25 on the season. And the one thing that's missing, the young man from North Royalton High School, a touchdown. Saxton again to throw. This is Orsini in the left flat. And Antonio gets it past the 35. He's brought down at the 37. Orsini out of the backfield this year. Catches the ball a little bit, but he's not, he's not exactly a threat. They certainly have enough of those from the wideout spots. Yeah, he, it's, I think it's more of a product of what they have available elsewhere. If we think back to last year, receiving core maybe wasn't quite as strong, and you saw a lot more of the screen game. You saw Orsini getting more active and more involved in the passing game, and as you touched on, quite frankly, they, they really haven't needed him through the air this year, which is you know good and bad, but overall it's been a positive for the offense. Well, that's a big stop for Bethany because their defense – Heading into this week late in the season has not been good. So to come out here right away and stop this explosive Spartan offense, that's got to give a, a Bethany team who's been struggling some confidence. Yeah, it's, that's all that you can ask for. Three and out to start. Looked like they had a nice ability to rally to the ball there and, and contain the Spartan offense. But if we're thinking about playing Case Western, you know Case is going to put up points. They're going to, you know, in my mind, probably get over 30 points at some point this afternoon. So if you're Bethany, you got to score to win. That's probably going to be your outlook for the rest of this. 
Bethany will start an offensive line that looks like this. Aaron Baird at left tackle, 300-pound senior. Jackson Weaver at left guard, a first-year player, 285. Kajel White in the middle, 5'10", 300 pounds. He's a senior. Ben Wright at right guard, 206, a senior. And Jaylene Thompson, the junior, at right tackle. They'll go to the air first, and they'll go deep. And it's incomplete at the 31-yard line. And good coverage there by Schuster's. Seems like he's been here for a decade, really one of the veterans of the defensive backfield. You see the ball come up here, he's able to lean and locate. You'll hear that all the time from the case defensive coaches. Lean into the receiver, force him to the sideline, and then get your head around and make a play on the ball. Marquise Robinson is the quarterback for Bethany. Where's number six? He's a senior. 5'8", 150, that quarterback from Miami Gardens, Florida. This is Robinson, he's in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Trey Owens, and Owens is met in the backfield and tackled for a loss. That's A.J. Dudowski from his defensive end spot. Yeah, that offensive line, they are physically big. You know, you got some good size on them, but don't expect them to be able to keep up with the speed and, and agility of the case defensive line, and probably more importantly, their linebackers this afternoon. Andrew, one of the things that the Spartan defense expects today out of Bethany is a lot of RPO, the run-pass option, because of what you just mentioned. Their offensive line isn't quick enough to stay with sustained blocks. Robinson's going to roll and throw. He got pressure. Ball almost picked off at the 42-yard line. The first time and not the last time we'll be calling Mr. Toast's name this afternoon. So really good job chasing the quarterback, pushing the pocket, able to impact the throw, and you know, Case comes right back gets the three. It was Gabe Trock, one of the four linebackers for this Spartan D that almost had a gift in his pocket. Bethany will punt. Elijah Miller will stand and punt. He's a 29-yard average as a punter this year for the Bison. Punts a low-line drive, and that goes over the head of the Spartans. It's going to turn out to be a great punt. Yeah, it's tough. Those low-line drives, kind of top spinners, especially with the sun in your eyes like we saw there, it's going to be tough to get hands on it. But gets the ball back to the Spartan offense, and, and this is where they'll look to settle down. You know, honestly, their, their first drives this year haven't been super impressive. It seems like it almost takes them five, six minutes to, to flush it out of their system. And, you know, if we look at their scoring patterns throughout the year, first quarter and fourth quarter, that's really been when they've been able to, to break away and put some serious points and distance up on the scoreboard. So look for them to come out here, get back into their rhythm, and, and move forward. They're averaging 405 yards in total offense per game. So once they get it going, they really get it going. This is Orsini with a handoff. Had a little seam up the middle, nice spin. And Antonio Orsini's going to pick up eight yards. That's great. That's exactly the type of run. If you had to distill Orsini down into one play, it's that right there. Following the big fellows up front, it's taking one, two, three, four, five. Half the defense to get him on the ground. Nothing more you can ask for on first down there. Orsini, the senior from Pittsburgh. He's had a real nice career here as a Case Western Reserve University Spartan. He and Drew Saxton in their final years. They have been quite a combination. And Orsini will get it again. And it's a first down and more. Orsini's up to the 34-yard line. He's got patience, good vision, good sidestep movement. Yeah, I think that describes you know, not only him, but also Dusler. So obviously, credit to the coaching staff, kind of figuring out, okay, what type of running back do we want to have and sticking to that mold? So I would agree, good patience, always moving forward. Very rarely are they tackling the backfield. Saxton at quarterback now. We'll see Fromberg and Kip as this day plays out as well. Rossini again, three straight times and three straight times with big yards. He's across the 40. They'll mark him at the 41. It'll be a second and four. They'll keep doing it, doing it, and doing it. That's a coach step special. It doesn't necessarily matter which play it is, but when they find something that works, they're going to do it over and over and over again until you prove it and stop it. They can run the football. As a team this year, they're fourth in the pack with almost 140 yards rushing per game as a team at 138. And Orsini and Dusler are the two guys that get most of the carries. This is Orsini again trying to get to the 44. And I think he did get there. It'll be a first down. They're going to move the markers. 
Ian Kipp will now check into the football game for the Spartans. And here's where it gets fun, Ron. As we've seen in the past, Kip's going to be a threat not only through the air but also on the ground. Can really turn up the, the craziness factor when we throw the third quarterback in there, Fromberg. But look for Kip to attack through the air. He's shown a good ability to, to come off the bench cold and really have no rust as he adjusts and gets into the game plan. Ethan Dahlem has also checked into the football game. Kip at quarterback, standing at his own 39. The sophomore from Mentor, 6'2", 210. Kip will keep it. Little quarterback draw by design. And he's tackled after picking up three yards. Saxton will come in. Kip will come out. It's one play, play for Ian Kip. Yeah, and I think part of what you know, Coach Debs is trying to buck the trend of this year, you switch wide receivers every play. You switch running backs every two or three plays. Why can't we do it with our quarterback? So it takes a lot of good coaching. It takes a lot of mental focus in that quarterback room because, again, you can come off the bench cold, and, and it can be really difficult to adjust. But they've shown an ability this year to, to do it, and I would imagine it continues. Borsini, patient again, past midfield to the 49-yard line. That was a second and seven. Antonio picks up four. Case offense gets across midfield for the first time today. Really, so far, it's been on the ground. Not a ton of work through the air, but you know, there's always a purpose. Pound it, pound it, pound it at the beginning, and then it'll start bringing the safeties in, and then you can drop it over the top. Nurk and Coin will split out wide to the right. As Andrew mentioned in our pregame, Michael Wykowski not expected to play today. They hope to have him back later in the year. Hurt his labor, lifting weights. Sean Michael James to block for Orsini. It's a good block. Orsini across the 45, and he's down near the 43-yard line. That will move the chains on third and two. There we go. After what seems like 15 carries in a row, we'll get number two, Dusler, and they'll give him a blow. So it's been the Orsini drive so far. And, you know, the difficult thing to game plan with this offense, sometimes you'll see different running backs. Well, there's a tendency. When one's in, it's a pass. When the other's in, it's a run. I don't really see that with this offense. I think it's been multifaceted no matter who's in there. And again, that's the overall unpredictability and, and difficulty with this team. Gage Dusler at midfield. The sophomore running back from Avon Lake High School. Now he's at the hip of his quarterback who will throw. And he'll throw it to Dusler out of the backfield. Gage has got some room. He's going to get a first down. And he's run out of bounds at the 33-yard line. There we go. There's a little screen game going. Yeah, and I think between the jet sweep that we saw on the last drive, the screen here, those are two, we'll say, tendency breakers so far from this year. Again, it's just put more stuff on tape for the opposing teams. This is Nurik with the catch and the block down the sideline. Going to cut it back, then down in. Did he stay in bounds? They'll say he stepped out at the seven-yard oh, line. Well, he play. was tiptoeing down that sideline like a Dancing with the Stars superstar. <laughs> well, it started with getting the play in. They went tempo there for the first time today. They have a set of probably four or five plays where it's just one word. Got the play in. Quick screen's always going to be in that package. And, you know, you find your playmakers as step one. Step two, getting the ball in their hands and letting them work. So good job by Nurik there getting downfield and putting the Spartans in the red zone for the first time. Well, Dusler, Mr. Red Zone touchdown is still in the football game. If you look at the red zone this year, they've been inside the 20, 21 times. This is Dusler with a handoff. He gets inside the five to the three. And remarkably, Andrew, and I, I think this is really remarkable, 19 out of the 21 appearances in the red zone, the Spartans have scored, and that includes 17 touchdowns. It's been really good. And that's what you need to do. When you get down there, there's so much pressure on the defense. It can be a little difficult because your playbook gets compressed, don't have as much room to operate, but they've shown the ability to, as they are right now, bring in these special packages. We see Phillips in a quarterback, the fourth quarterback we've seen today, and, and they've been able to find Pater usually. This is coin in motion. Phillips will keep it. He gets down to the two, maybe the one. He got hit by a linebacker and dropped. It will set up third and goal. Phillips, the fourth quarterback in a, a grouping that really has played out pretty nicely as this season has moved along. You and I did the first game, seems like a long time ago, a loss to Johns Hopkins, who's you know, one of the top 10 teams in the country. The four quarterback system looked a little disjointed then, but it is certainly leveled out. Coin in motion. Phillips will keep it again, and they were not fooled by the fake to coin. 
No, and you get the freshman in there, he's he's excited. He wants to find the end zone, and he is so, so close. They might keep the offense out there. Looks like they will keep the offense, going to bring in their, we'll say, more traditional package. Two running back look. We're going to have Dusler and Orsini out there, which makes it really difficult on the, the defense. But Coach Debs is going to not only bet on his offense, also bet on the defense here. If he gets stopped, they got the ball on the two-yard line. He can go get after the quarterback from there. Dallum and Coyne are out to the right. In a slot is Orsini. Dusler's behind his quarterback. Saxton to throw. He's got a wide open receiver, receiver, and it's Antonio Orsini. So Orsini scores, and on a fourth and goal from the two, the Spartans pay it off. And we got a flag. Wait, Bethany's clapping. It's going to go against Case Western Reserve. There seems to be a bit of a confusion on, on who the penalty uh, is on and maybe even what the penalty is. Well, we got the old classic United Nations beating here. We got four of the best and brightest putting their heads together to figure out what happened. Coach Debs certainly does not agree with what they're allegedly going to call. There is no foul for a legal low block. The results of the play, the touchdown. Well, there we go. Everybody likes that. All that just for another touchdown. So we said earlier, Orsini not necessarily a factor in the passing game this year as much as he has been in the past. And what do you know, Ron? They go down and throw the ball in the, in the end zone. So Case able to get on the scoreboard early. It's exactly what you want to do against a team like Bethany. Get up early, keep the, the pedal on the floor, and go from there. That is Joseph Rhodes, and his kick is up and good. So with five minutes and 44 seconds left to play in this opening quarter, it's the Spartans of Case Western Reserve, seven, Bethany nothing. We'll be back. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. Could be a better day weather-wise here in northeastern Ohio. And this is at the end of a week that was old man winter early in the week with rain and sleet, slush, 30 degree temperatures. It was awful. Yeah, we'll take this any day of the week for End of October, beautiful day for football. That's Trey Dean with the football for Bethany, and Trey gets it up to the 26. Bethany, 1-5 on the year. They are 0-4 in PAC play. They won just a, one game a year ago, and that was in the middle of the season. They beat Teal 28-7. First-year head coach Brandon Robinson. We need a 40-second clock on the play clock, and please start it immediately. Coach Robinson with some local roots. He was the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach of Baldwin Wallace. Yeah, I would say you know, it was time for a change at Bethany. They've been they've been down for a couple years, and you know, anytime you can get fresh blood in there, it's it's really an unknown. You have no idea where the program's going to go. It usually takes two or three recruiting classes to to see what the fit's going to be like. And uh, first back, it's Trey Owens, and he gets stacked. That defensive front was in the backfield just as Owens got the football. Yeah, we see Tong, Toth. I don't, I'm not really sure who's going to get the TFL there, but that's a good problem to have. I think it was the entire front seven got a hand on the ball carrier and able to get him down for a loss. Let's mention that front seven. Dudowski, Kelly, and Tong, the three down linemen. And then the four linebackers across the middle, they're all juniors. Marco Toth, Sean Torres, Gabe Trock, and Ryan Cabrera. Incomplete pass, dangerously close to being picked off. 
that defense is swarming. There's just not only are you not going to be able to get anything done in the run game, you just don't have time in the passing game to, to let the routes develop and let the receivers separate. It's going to be really difficult all day. So it's third and 13 from the 23. Just inside five minutes to play, opening quarter. It's Case Western Reserve seven. Bethany still looking for their first score. Brian Cabrera at outside linebacker looks like he wants the blitz on this play. Here he comes. Deep ball, left sideline. This one will sail deep into the sideline of the Bison. Yep. 12 so that defender. looked easy. 12th defenders the sideline. I mean, it's you can see it right there. They they just don't have time to let it let it develop. Robinson's pretty much getting the ball and, and having it dump it right away. So if you're on the defensive or defensive backfield side, you got to cover for two maybe three seconds, and then you should be able to to let your boys up front get to the quarterback. Landon Bailey will kick for the second time for Bethany. Spartans will have great field position. I'll tell you what, for only having an average of 29 yards coming in, punter looks pretty good. Really getting some roll. <laughs> you know, just like a, a little flare for a single. It all looks like a line drive in the box score. Yep, Elijah Miller, kudos to you. Showing us, showing us that special teams matter too, Rock. Saxton will lead that offense out. Caden Parlett will come out again. He'll line up in a, in a slot spot. He, he ran the jet sweep last time he was in the football game. Yeah, we're seeing more Parlett, seeing more of Arrington. And again, when, when guys go down in this wide receiver room, that's why you have depth. That's why they have five or six guys. It's going to be a new guy, new main character each week. And it's good to see that, that culture continue. They fake the sweep. They go down the sideline. Ball caught by Orsini. Throw, maybe a better catch. You, know, you talked about the 12th defender. Orsini had absolutely no room. That 12th defender was the sideline, and it, it really gave him very little room to land. He it did was a good. Job. Wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say good on Sunday, two yeah. feet in. But great throw by Saxton, and just as we all predicted, leading receiver on the day, Orsini able to bring it in. <laughs> That's the herd that I said that he doesn't really catch the ball much out of the backfield. Yeah, well. That's how it goes. I don't believe Saxon can throw a touchdown here. What do you think? Let's see if we can see reverse what it. Happens. He's going to throw it. Short pass. That's the dirt. Wow. He got upended at the 45 yard line. That was a lookout. That was a lookout throw. Isaiah Thomas able to come in. Good clean tackle. Looks like they're going with a cover two look. And with cover two, you got the corners going to squat underneath there. And anything in the flat is going to get a race. So good job by De Bethany on that play. Able to get Nurik down for no gain. Ethan Dahlem will check into the football game. Nurik not faced. Staying out there is a tough hit, able to get back up and keep on rolling. Coin Dahlem and Nurik split out wide to the right. Second and nine, Bowles at the 45. This is Deusler. And there's a penalty flag down that came from the backfield. That's going to be a hole. Yep. Yes, it is. Everyone's holding, you just got to keep it inside. Got to hide it. Penalty wise, the Spartans are second in the conference. Offense, That's not a good spot to be in. Penalty. Yardage wise, they don't have a lot of penalty yards, but they have a lot of penalties, if that makes sense. Not a lot of 10 yards and 15 yard penalties, but. Motion and offsides was something that early in the season really gave them trouble. Yeah, they're second in the conference, 109th in the country for yards per game, yards per game, which kind of tells me the conference isn't having a great year as far as penalties go. But typically with a, a Coach Debelak team, you're going to see very clean, very disciplined, just good quality football usually throughout the year. Saxon will throw, looks right, goes over the middle, pass caught. And positive yards inside the 37-yard line. That's Frumper. <laughs> Come on, you sound surprised. We're still 
it's it's weird. It's it takes a little bit to get used to. They throw to their third string quarterback as much as I'm sure anybody in football history has. It was third and two. Deusler got the handoff and Gage got the first down. Yeah, my biggest shock. I can't believe that Fromberg's listed at 6'1", 200. He looks much bigger. Maybe it's just a factor of how he runs, but we've seen it throughout this year. He'll get quick underneath throws like that, quick screens off to the edges, and you know it's not even he's a tough runner for the quarterback. He's just a tough runner overall. Fromberg has 15 carries as one of those rotated quarterbacks this year. Bridgewater, New Jersey. This is Deusler again with a seed. Deusler with the 30, 25, and he gets down to the 21 yard. He's so good. It's so, so patient, but it's, I almost want to call it aggressive patience. He's always moving forward. Keeps the feet moving. He'll have lateral cuts. Always getting up positive yards. And, you know, first down carries that go for first downs, that's going to be a key to any offense, especially this one. He did a great job of reading Peter Kelly's block. Kelly, the left guard, was pushing a man out and was actually running. Time out. And decided to cut it back in. That's a timeout for Bethany College. I think we got a problem with the old chain gang up at the top. See, it's a team, team effort. Got to keep the momentum going. Game day staff, offense, coaches. Balls at the 21. Just under two minutes left to play in this first quarter. Great to be, great day to be in the band. I'll tell you what, great day to be outside doing anything. Saxon looks like he wants to run. He will. He'll throw it out of bounds. It initially looked like he was going to run it on a quarterback draw because he got the snap and he kind of backed down like this. You know. Yeah, it was, it was a little strange, a little happy feet, but. There we see, seems like once a game, we're saying there's the veteran presence, or presence, good pocket awareness, able to throw it away and live to fight another day. I walked around the track, the Bill Sudik track here at DeSanto Field before the game, and the ivy that lines the area over there by the dorms and the shot that you just saw was really starting to turn. Orsini. Still not down, he'll get up to the 17 yard line. Tough sled, earn every bit of that five yard gain there. We got third and medium here. Going up to the traditional spread look, two wide on each side. We're seeing in the backfield to see which of the as we've touched on, deep wide receiver rooms able to, to pick up the first down here. Saxon will dump it. And in and out of the hands of Rossini, they'll say it was a forward pass, so it falls incomplete. And they like that play call. They had it. Spread everything out. Spread it out. Create space. Yeah, it was going to come down to Orsini having to make a guy miss, but stage one, you got to catch the ball. Got to keep your eyes on the ball and complete the catch. So it looks like the offense will stay out there. Kind of an awkward spot for them. I haven't really seen, you know, how far out Rhodes can go from a kicking perspective this year, but looks like, again, Coach Debs is going to lean on that defense. It's it's a product to have faith in them and going for it here on fourth down. Rhodes is just one of one in field goal attempts this year, and that was in the 30-yard range. to get it to Orsini, and Antonio just didn't turn around. Yeah, it was a screen. It was a screen. Something went wrong there. Not sure if Orsini was fully aware. There's there's obviously different types of screens, so something was disjointed there. They'll, they'll get back on the sideline. They'll coach it up. Coach Debs visibly disappointed. They, they thought they had the right call there, and if they completed it, I think they might. So the bye.
Tyson going to try to do something in the last 36 seconds that they have failed in the first 11 minutes and 30 seconds, and that's to move the football, and they do not on that run play. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see when the first quarter stat sheet comes in, but I can't imagine they have more than five yards rushing defensive lines been doing a really really good job of penetrating early and you know if you're going to run the read option hopefully you're only reading one guy the problem so far for bethany is there's been two guys in the backfield each time which makes it really really difficult to operate that's the end of the first quarter one quarter in the books got another one coming Spartan 7, Bison nothing. From DeSanto Field, we'll be back in moments. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular spectacular accommodations. Party. Say hi to Sparty. Was he Sparty before Sparty up was Sparty at Michigan State and East Lansing? Well, of course, I would think that Case Western sets the standard. We're the ones that invented it. I have no historical background in saying that, but he's our Spartan. That's our guy. That's the story. We're sticking to it. Second down nine, the Bison with the football at the 18 yard line. Gonna try to pass it over the middle, pass caught, then fumbled, ball's loose. Spartans have it, and they'll mark it at the 30 yard line. It's a lot of good hitting going on over there. A lot of pinballing around there. Looks like we had Sean Torres. I don't know if we're gonna call that a pick, a fumble. Well, Mickens caught at the tight end, Tim Mickens, and, and was running with the football, I think. We'll see it here on the replay, but it just started pounding Mickens. There were three or four Spartans that really got after him. Yeah, and at the end of the day, Spartans able to get the turnover. We said at the beginning, if Bethany wants to have a chance today, they have to win the turnover battle, and Case able to get the first one of the day, plus territory. Looks like we got Kip out there to see if he can provide a spark to the offense. It's been able to drive down one for two so far in the red zone. Ian Kip will hand it off to Orsini. Antonio tries the left side of that line, and it's a good run. Orsini up to the 23-yard line. Yeah, and as we look at the first quarter stat sheet, total offensive plays for Bethany, seven yards, two. Hard to win with that, just a time of possession yardage issue. Case, 25 plays, 147 yards, as we said, able to get on the scoreboard early. Looking to capitalize on a turnover here as well. Seven plays, two yards. Nowhere to go up but up on that one. Well, and you know what, Coach Miller, he wishes it was zero yards. That's what, that's what I can guarantee. Just Kip again, Orsini will try it on second four, and Antonio's inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, it looks like they feel like they've figured out something in the run game. The first quarter was more of a straight-ahead counter look. This time they're going with more of the zone blocking, stretching it to the right, stretching it to the left. Usually go to that when you feel like your offensive linemen have the athletic ability to do that, be able to run really turn the shoulders of the D-line the linebackers and, and create those seams that Orsini is so good at, at picking up on and, and hitting as he does. Kip at quarterback this year after six games. He can run it, pass it. He's got nearly 150 yards rushing with a touchdown, and he's thrown for nearly 300 with three touchdowns. He'll take it, he'll roll, he'll throw. This is the fullback, Sean Michael James. That's it. Now the game can start. Once 44 gets his, check, his catch, his bootleg catch, now we know it's an official Spartan Saturday. Every game he does it, and, and it's effective. It's five, you know, six yards each time. And you know something that he hasn't done? He has zero carries this year. <laughs> that one was Man. almost a pick six. They, I think they owe Mr. Nurick a, maybe a steak dinner tonight. That's, he has that's, gotten hit hard twice. Well, it's two straight passes, and it's, it's tough to read pre-snap, but... If you can figure out that they're going to be in that cover two look, that is not the route that you want to be running. So 
Looks like Riley. that one, Nurse gonna take a breather and hopefully he's gonna get back out there. Holding his right side. I don't know if he's holding his shoulder or his hip area. The way he had his arm. That'll be good, he's a tough kid. Third Another third four. short. This is what we had last time. See if Case is able to convert this time in the red zone. Two quarterbacks in, Fromberg. Kip will keep it himself. He needs to get to the three, he's gonna be a yard short. No, and he had it. He did, he, he, he had it going left and he decided to hop back to the right. You see it. He just ducks his head right there, I think he gets it. Well, they'll mark him at the five. Spartans gonna kick this time. Yeah, you don't wanna have, you know, two straight possessions where you go down, you're inside the 20 and, and you come away with no points. So now you do have to execute the kick. Obviously, as we touched on, Rhodes doesn't have a ton of kicking experience outside extra points this year, but this is more or less an extra point. See if they're able to convert. Joseph Rhodes, the fifth from the left side. And that is good. Curls around the goalpost. And with 12 minutes and 26 seconds left to play in this opening half, it's Case Western Reserve 10, Bethany nothing. We'll be back. Take a look at the standings in the conference right now. Carnegie Mellon ranked 18th in the country. They're number one, seven wins, no losses. They're five and zero oh in pack play. Grove City, who knocked off Case Western Reserve on the road for the Spartans in a game where they had three turnovers in the fourth and final quarter and lost by a point, 14-13 to Grove City. They're four and one, six and one. Case Western Reserve right behind them at three and one and four and two. And then Washington and Jefferson who the Spartans upset early in the season when Washington and Jay was in the top 20. They are at five and two and three and two. Yeah, I'm looking around, so we, you keep hearing us touch on, Case kind of controls their own destiny. They do probably have to win out. They get Carnegie Mellon at home to end the season. Case having only one 40 loss. 40 on the play clock and start, the please. They need a Grove City loss. Grove City holds the tiebreaker over Case. And if I go and look around the league, Westminster is currently up 10 points at halftime on Grove City. So that would be the, the final domino that Case needs to fall to control their own destiny. Obviously, Case needs to continue to close this game out and then take care of business the next couple weeks. But domino number one, looks like Grove City is, at least for the time being, in a dogfight over there with Westminster. Jaheim Hodo with the football. He gets up to the 27-yard line, so that's pickup of two for the Bison offense. Yeah, defense looks good. Yeah, it seems like each tackle, it's three, four Spartans rushing to the ball carrier and, and able to get them on the ground. And, you know, again, this is exactly the type of defense that, that Coach Warren Miller wants. He wants it swarming. There's not going to be one guy that you can key in on. If you focus on one, there's two more coming behind him. Marquise Robinson in the shotgun. It's second and eight, balls at the 27. This is Hoda with the football, straight up the gut, and he gets up to the 32-yard line. And on that one play, three-yard rush, four-yard rush, that was their yardage total for the whole game. So it's really been tough sledding so far for the Bison. Credit the case for coming in with a good game plan, and probably more importantly, executing on the game plan. Well, they've already switched out their running back. And I'll, I'll be interested to know if, if maybe Trey Owens got hurt because he has over 600 yards rushing and he had 164 last week in a loss to Waynesburg. And he has not been in the game in this series. It's been Hoda. Third oh, down, that, was that pass. Boy, that pass was so far behind though. I don't know how you can even call that catchable. It was Trey Dean who was cutting across the middle, but the pass was well behind him. Yeah, it's it's annoying, letter of the law, it's, it's gonna be pass interference. I'm not sure anybody other than Calvin Johnson was gonna be able to catch that ball. We'll see if they pick it up here. They are gonna talk about it. I mean, it actually looked like it was supposed to be a down and out, not a down and in. Yeah, they called oh, it uncatchable. 
You know what? They should huddle up more often. It's two conferences now. It's gone our way both times. Both on the way of the Spartans. So let's put Bethany in a, a fourth and three. I, that's why I'm not a football coach. I don't know what you do here. Uh, you've seen your defense is going to struggle to to get stops, and it looks like they're going to bring the punt team out. Well, I guess because it's just ten nothing. You really don't want to give the Spartans great field position if you don't convert on a on a fourth down. Because honestly, Andrew, Case hasn't lit up the field with their offensive performance so far. No, it's it's been say slow and methodical with the run game that for one reason or another Bethany's been able to shut down the we'll say intermediate the deep passing game for the Spartans so far. Punt off the outside part of the foot of the punter. The Spartans have been back to receive a punt four times. I don't know that they've actually received one. Well and I saw this earlier looking through our notes. If you look at the team rankings Case's punt return average is 0.0. .0 as you can imagine, is 10th in the conference and 229th in the entire Division Three. I wonder what 9th in the conference is. <laughs> Half a yard. <laughs> Point two. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know, I, I think the one year, one of Urban Meyer's Florida teams, they didn't give up a punt return the entire year. Not one yard, which is one of the crazier stats I've ever seen. Well, he was always involved in his special teams, even as a head coach. Saxon with a pump fake. This is Dahlum with it. Ethan makes the defender miss and picks up a couple more yards. That was great. That was a good little bubble screen. They pumped it, seeing if they could get anything deep down the field. Then he just come back to Dahlum, the original target. Case working quickly. Orsini needed three. He'll get maybe two. Spartans on the year offensively average 135 yards rushing per game, 251 yards passing. The 251 per game is number one in the pack. Blocker set up. Osini will follow his fullback. Antonio needs two yards. He's going to push the pile and get about six. Perfect third and short. Good patience. You see it here. He doesn't necessarily get stuffed, but he does get held up at the line and then able to stay patient, keep the feet moving, credit the offensive linemen, staying on their blocks. You see 61 there. Able to keep the ball moving and, and pick up the first down. Balls at the 46. Scores 10 0 Case Western Reserve. And we've got 9.30 left to play. Pass over the middle. It's caught. Dahlum with it. Breaks a tackle. Cuts outside. Needs to break one more. And he's down at the 25-yard line. Both sides. Throw and catch there. It's great. You see the replay. Saxon. Full pump fake to the outside. Both the defense. Dahlum's able to clear the zone. Break a tackle, and it's off of the races. So Dahlum showing a strong first half here. And there's the passing game starting to open up just a little bit. Jake Grons now in the football game for the Spartans. He's in a slot on the left of his quarterback, Saxton. Yeah, he's another big boy. Get him the ball in space, and he's usually pretty tough to get on the ground. Hand off Orsini. Behind blockers on the right side. Nice spin by Antonio Orsini. Going right, spun out of it, but back it's weird. to the left. When we, were, when we were sitting on the bench in pregame, and I think it might have been actually after you left, the running backs were practicing almost a drill that looks identical to that. They hit the ball and they, they practice that backward spin move. It's, it's a little different. It almost makes me think of you know Kareem Hunt on the Browns. He's got a kind of that, he puts his back into him, just keeps the feet pushing and moving and, and spinning and able to pick up positive yards again. We're seeing he's having a really good game so far. Grons and Coyne split out wide to the right, two receivers to the left, and one back in the backfield. That's Orsini. Second down and two for Case Western. Throwing back. This is Coyne with a blocker. Coyne with a nice cut. And Noah Coyne is in for a touchdown. Great play. It's the day of the screen. The day of the screen. It's probably the fourth or fifth screen pass. I think it's gone to a different guy each time. And you see here Coyne able to get it. He's a bigger receiver. It takes him a little bit to get going. But 
It takes a little jump cut to the inside, lets the blocking set up and able to find the end zone. And you know, if you have problems inside the 10 yard line, what's the easiest fix? Score from the 20. <laughs> exactly. This is Rhodes again, second point after touchdown. Just Rhodes nearly perfect on the year. He's 12 of 13, and the Spartans take a 17 point lead. Eight minutes and eight seconds left in this first half. And that's more like it. That's, that's what you expect. So you got eight and change here. I mean, I. Really, it's going to be difficult for the Bison offense to, you know, not only one, hold the Spartans to 17 points, but they got to score 17 themselves to have a, to have a chance in this game. The, the Spartan defense has done such a good job, and that, that's why we talk about complementary football. You know, maybe the offense sputters a little bit at the beginning. doesn't necessarily have the red zone success that they think, but when you have a defense like they do, it gives you chance after chance, and finally you're able to break the seal and, and get back to your scoring ways. With that pass, I think probably a couple passes before that, but we mentioned in the open you know, some of Saxon's career records. He is now in the top 35 players in NCAA Division III history as far as passing yards go. So congrats to Drew, and like I said, he's probably more focused on getting the win not only this week, but for the rest of the season as we go. This is Hodo from his own end zone. Hodo. 35-yard line all the way to the 40. Boy, if Bethany was looking for some kind of spark, Hodo gave it to him. Yeah, that's good. It's the best way to help your offense is get a good field position. Let special teams have an impact. Special teams, a lot of times you'll hear coaches say, special teams is aggressive. It's a part of the offense. So good work by Hodo there, showing a little shiftiness and be able to get the ball out to just about the 40-yard line. And Hodo will stay in the football game. He's their tailback, has been in the last several series. Once a game, if not more, Cabrera's chasing someone down. He can really, really run. He almost he looks like a safety. I think we heard, you know, Toth in the open. That that's kind of a conversion that he went through as well, going from safety down to the linebacker position. And it can bite you when you play a team that's more smash mouth and really has some some big uglies up front to lean on you. But if it's a read option attack like the Bison are using today, those guys can run and, and that'll blow up any reads that you're trying to make. Coach Debelak and I were talking about player size and how oftentimes it's a determining factor as to where that player goes division wise you know three Time two out. or one Bethany, and he said he's always first half. he's always felt that that size isn't as important as is ability and I think if you look at the the linebackers for Case Western Reserve it's a great example Cabrera and Toth are both well, let's look at it. Toth is 180 pounds, 5 foot 8. Cabrera is 5'11", 195. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's speed. It's, it's tough to game plan against it. And like I said, you can run the read option. You're going to read the guy, but what do you do when you make the read and then he's fast enough and quick enough to recover and go the other direction? So speed can really, speed plus the coaching that they have, that's how they're really able to get these linebackers out in space. And I say it every week, it's a linebacker-driven defense. There's only three down linemen through the 3-4. The linemen suck up the blockers, and then these linebackers really go out and run. And, and Coach Miller can't be anything more than pleased with what he's seen out of them today. So it's second and long, second and 11. The quarterback almost got sacked in the backfield. Somehow, Hodo got that handoff. I thought Robinson still had it. Hodo yeah. got it, and he picks up almost the first down. Yeah, and that, that's what they're looking to do, take advantage of the speed, or, well, you know, kind of flip it around. If Case is going to come in flying like that, you've got to make the read and get, be able to pull the ball out. Then you'll probably have a lane behind it. But 
this is where we're going to see if, if Bethany has a chance. So they got to get first downs. I'm not sure they've converted a third down yet at this point. Maybe one, but looks like they put their, their bigger package in, see if they can get the short yardage conversion. It's Charlie Mills now in the backfield, the fullback looking tight body. Robinson will throw it, ball across the middle, and a nice catch. And holding on to the football for Bethany. Deion Parker's only 5'7", 150. He really went up and got that ball. That was a great catch. Good throw by Robinson. And, and like I said, if, if Bethany have, you know, hopes to have any chance of mountain and come back here, going to have to convert on third down like they did there. So I don't see 13 on the roster. Got him on the two deep. And That's right, interesting. Though. He's not on the roster. Oh, he's out there making plays. He, he is. Can. Sack, fumble. Spartan still on the floor. Oh, it's going to be a scrum. We got a good one. It's like two Spartans had a chance for it. Not sure who came up with it ultimately. Yes, and Tong able to get the strip sack there. Bethany keeps it. Bethany keeps it. Ah, oh, it's frustrating, but still, I'll take a strip sack any day of the week like that. The center, Kajel White, was able to. Hold on to that football. Yeah, it looks like Marco Toth is going to come off here a little hobbled, but plug and play with the next linebacker in there. So Yahim Hodo, who had been very effective in the last two series in the backfield, gingerly left the field on that third and two. He has not been back. And I've mentioned already Trey Owens, their tailback, their leading rusher, has been absent as well. They may be down to their third back which may cause them to do more of this. That's past, or past the football. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because it's whenever there's a completion like that in the flats, Coach Miller, the, the defensive coordinator, he's never been OK with that. He never thinks it's acceptable. And sure enough, I mean, it's only a two, three yard gain, and he's immediately in the linebackers here. So it's funny. It's good, though. It's I mean, they're up 17-0. They've had a great great game plan so far, and the show he's never satisfied. He wants to completely lock it down, no yards at any point. Robinson to throw behind his receiver at the 31-yard line. Try to get it to Jacob Munoz, and Bethany's going to have to punt the football. Yeah, and this is super, 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 super fake territory. Looks like uh, they are putting the punt return team out there, but this will be punt safe all day. Can't have any funny business. Just let them get the punt off, call fair catch. Landon Bailey will punt it. Four fifty-nine left, so Case is going to have plenty of time to maybe add another score. Boy, that one was oh, look out. That's lucky it did hit somebody immediately. He's, he almost missed it, and it's going to pin Case inside the 10-yard line. That's great. If you look at the punt stats, it's great. <laughs> he's all, I'm telling you, if, if, if that ball, hit, say, it hit a Case player, I mean, because it was so low. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. a fumble. No chance to react. Right. Coming at you hot. You know, look it up at the scoreboard. We've got four minutes, 48 seconds. They'll get into their four-minute offense. One of those scenarios. They want to, of course, the focus is points, but if they had their way, take it down and, and score with just about no time left on the clock. So it's a good chance to, to see what the offense has got. Looks like they're going to go with Kip and Fromberg in there again. Saxon obviously on the sidelines waiting Kip. to sub back in. But Kip in the shotgun, that's Fromberg on his left hip right now. Ian's going to keep it, and he's going to get hit in the backfield. He'll lose yards. Yeah, they, they've tried to run that, say, shovel, shovel pitch, shovel option twice. They tried it down in the red zone before. And, Bethany's been all over it. It was Jordan Aldridge, the senior defensive end. And this is where, if I had to guess, they're going to let Kip sling it a little bit. He's been really good this year as far as hitting guys running up the seam. It seems like every time he's in, he's hitting one of those 20, 30 yard seam routes. Kip with time. Now he loses the time. He's going to tuck and run, and he's going to get up to the 17-yard line near a first down. And we got to work on the slide a little bit. He <laughs> did not slide well. Got to work on the slide. If you're going to take the hit, you might as well get your money's worth, really put your shoulder down. But if we're going to slide, slide, protect yourself. Now, Case does have four quarterbacks, but they're still valuable. Need all of them happy and healthy out there. Kip 
still looking. Sends coin deep. Nobody there, he just throws it into the turf. Riley Nurik was in the vicinity, but nobody was open. No, it was good coverage. Good coverage. I, you know, I've been pretty impressed with the, the Bison defensive backfield, actually. Isaiah Thomas has made a couple plays. I think he's been the culprit both times that Nurik has gotten blasted in the flat. Thomas has been able to come up and make the play. And it's still 17 0. You know, you got K's somewhat backed up into their own territory. Bethany got to be looking for a, a pick here, got to be ball hawking. Got to make it easier on the offense if you can. Second and long. Kip again to throw. And he's going to get hit as he tried to step into a deep pass to Noah Coin. He had plenty of room in front of him. If he wanted to just tuck and run that one again, he could have picked up at least eight yards. He did, yeah. And, and I'm sure he's looking to pass first. Good play by, by Jordan Aldridge there, able to you know, stay persistent and, and go get the quarterback on the ground. But Kip just not not having great pocket awareness there. He did have the time. Uh, at that point, you either got to you know, take off and take the seven, eight yards or dump it off somewhere. So it's third and 12. Spartans need to get to the 29. Kip with time. This is Coyne at the 28. He caught it very close to a first down. Let's see where they mark him. They're going to mark him at the 27. So what do you do, Coach? I, I'm going for it here. I mean, I haven't seen anything from the Bethany offense that makes me scared about them getting the ball in short territory. I, I think you go for it here. Kip has shown, you know, if and when he wants to run, he's going to pick up three, four yards fairly regularly. So see what they do. They got, looks like, Dusler in, in the backfield there as well. Brock Brown's in the game, the block. Kip's just going to keep it and move forward. And that second effort gets him up to the 31-yard line. There's no mystery there. He had all the big uglies packed in tight, and Kip able to put the head down. He's he's pretty long and lean too, so I mean, you get those taller quarterbacks, more or less just fall forward and you'll pick up a yard or two. A little breathing room now. Yeah, a little breathing room. Clock just starting to become a, a concern. In case two timeouts left, we just went under two minutes left on the clock. It's taken them nearly three minutes to move about 20 yards. It's a pass behind his intended receiver. Jake Grants. And candidly, what I what I think Coach Dabbs is doing here, 17 nothing. If they go into the half up 17, perfectly okay with that. It's a great half. I don't know we've seen Kip in a two minute drill yet this year. Saxon, we know he he can handle the offense. He can run it in compress time. Probably want to see if Kip's able to handle that. You never know. It's always good to get your backups or alternates experience running the the hurry up offense. Kip, with time, he'll run it. He'll get the first down, he'll get out of bounds, he'll stop the clock. He's also going to get a holding penalty, if I had to guess. Flag down at the 30, and it's a hold. See, he can do it. When it's there, he, he's able to get his head down and pick up a good head of steam, get positive yardage. Holding, offense, number 67, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Certainly part of that was contributed to by the holding penalty, but now they're starting to, again, the clock, they got a minute 41, two timeouts. We're gonna find out if Mr. Kipp's able to handle this offense, and you know, it's one thing to run it, it's another thing to run it with a quick time period like we have. They'll stay in that four receiver set with Deusler, the lone back in the backfield. Over the middle, that's Grants with it at the 20. With some space, he gets it up to the 28. I think that was our guy Fromberg, wasn't it? That was You're our, right, it was Fromberg. I think that was our third string quarterback. Eight, nine. <laughs> well, they all look the same, They look right? close. They're all about six foot, six one, 200 pounds. Fromberg, you see, coming in old school, no gloves, love it. He would have picked up positive yards. Now we got third and 11. Looking to hit one of those seam passes. Nurik's in the slot. Dollum's in the slot. I would think you get one-on-ones with those guys, maybe make it happen. Coins wide to the right. Deuce on the block. Kip to throw. Caught at the 39. And It'll be about a half yard short. Just short. That's Isaiah Arrington. Yeah, and great play, good catch. It's going to be 
probably a coaching point when they go back and watch the tape. If it's an 11-yard route, and you know you're going to be coming back to the quarterback, maybe extend it another yard. Timeout. Out. Face Western. Run at the 12, and then when you come back, you're still able to pick up the first please down. Please reset so. the game clock to 58 seconds, please. Coach Five, Debs has called a timeout. He'll have one left after this with 52 seconds. And they're obviously going for it. It's probably about a half a yard. Yeah, and I'm looking for him to don't get cute here. You just saw you got the advantage on the inside. Get under center. You have 52 seconds. You're going to have to get up and probably spike it right after. But pick up the first down, QB sneak. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Of course, they'll do a three-quarterback look and orbit motion now after I say that. But getting the first down is goal number one. So any update on that Grove City-Westminster game? Oh, it was it's fine now. 10 nothing, Westminster. Last we checked, it was halftime. It was still 17-7, Westminster over Grove City. There. So that's what it was. That was the 10-point spread. There, into the third quarter at this point. Yeah, if you're a fan of Spartan football, you're pulling for Westminster. Ooh. Spartan someone moved. moved. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought they moved The twice. left guard moved twice, actually, for Case Western Reserve. Ball start, offense, number 67. Yeah, Peter Five Kelly. Fourth down. Got caught the second time. They missed the first time. <laughs> I was gonna, it was at least twice. So now what you want to see, it's that kind of leave a sour taste in your mouth as you go into halftime. 58 seconds here. You get this punt off, and we talked about it in pregame. This is a nightmare field to, when you get an afternoon game. It's a sunny day like today. Catching the ball is not real fun. So if you're Bethany, catch it, then you can go to work on offense. Rhodes' punt is a beauty. It will be caught down at the 17-yard line with 50 seconds to play. Good kick. Man, day of the punters. How about that? Really? So if you're Bethany, you get the ball to start the second half. If you got a chunk play, if you got those plays that are starred, asterisked in your playbook, this is where you got to pull them out. Find a way, get down there, get points on the board, get the ball to start the second half again. Well, it's a good sign for Bethany. Yahim Hodo is now back in the backfield. He's behind his quarterback at the 10. He'll get the football. He'll try the right side. There's plenty of room. And Hodo's up to the 35-yard line. That's far and away their best play of the day. Some of it's a product of case playing on a total prevent, but they'll be more than happy to let Bethany take the ball, run it, run out some time. Hodo again. Stacked up at the 39. And Bethany almost looks content to take it into half. Two timeouts. No real urgency. A little surprising. I mean, you got to take advantage of every opportunity you get here. But again, yeah, there's probably a reason we're up here in the booth. Now it looks like they're just going to let this one run out. They certainly have time on the play clock to let it run out, and that's exactly what they're going to do. We're at five seconds, and both teams are starting to head into the locker room. So at halftime here at the Santo Field, the Spartans are pitching a shutout. They have 17, and the Bison of Bethany College have zero. 17 nothing. Coach Debelax team at halftime as Case Western Reserve trying to improve to five and two on this football season and keep pace with their nemesis Carnegie Mellon in the PAC.